Hello everyone, it's Karen. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do an album review, which I don't do too often, but uh, there's some that I would like to kind of do regularly on the channel. Um, but today we're going to do an album review. Today we're going to do an album that will turn 60 in March. Maybe a bit early, but I wanted to do it for this year, this era period, because um, this album will be 60 on March 22nd. So I think people know what it's going to be when you see the video. But um, today we're going to be talking about the Beatles' debut album, Please Please Me. I haven't really talked about too many Beatles albums, uh, but um, I haven't really done a Beatles review since um, Abbey Road uh, a few years ago. So I wanted to do this um, this uh, video where we're going to spotlight and review this album, Please Please Me by the Beatles. So we're going to talk about the album, show you my copies, um, talk about each track individually and give the song and just rate the album as a whole. So background. So 1962, the Beatles have been going for about two years. Uh, they had been to Hamburg a few times during their start in 1960. They had played the cavern on many occasions, which when they became really well known, but they hadn't yet made it big in terms of nationwide. In New Year's Day 1962, they had a done a Decca audition, which didn't work. They were rejected by the label. So their manager, Brian Epstein, took their tapes of the Decca audition and tried to play it to various record companies, but um, unfortunately, there was they didn't really get much interest with it. Um, but then Brian, I think, a friend of his had said to him, uh, take these to George Martin of uh, Parlophone, he could do something with them. And when George heard the recordings, he was quite impressed, but uh, he wasn't... Um, but he, 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 George then decided to have the group come down to London. They came down to London and they auditioned uh, for George Martin in June of 1962 in Parlophone, and it was successful, they passed. And then in between that, between the next session, Pete Best was replaced with Ringo Starr on drums. So, um... They recorded Love Me Do as a first single, and that peaked at number 17. And um, George Martin came up with an idea of he wanted to record one of the Beatles' Cavern performances. He and But when he went to the venue, the Cavern Club, he realised that it wouldn't be suitably acoustic for recording an album. So he decided to have the Beatles come in and do the songs that they were doing in the studio. But before that, they recorded another single called Please Please Me in November of 62, which was a big top 10 in the UK in the January of 63. And um, they then went, um, during a break in their tour schedule in February 1963, on February 11th, 1963, one day they went through 10 of the songs in this album. Most of the songs in the album were recorded in one day, which is difficult to believe that, uh, that a group that quick to could get an album done in that, that period and tough time. Um, in 1963 at the time, um, it wasn't that common for like, albums for pop acts to bring out albums. I mean, we'd had people like Elvis Presley or Buddy Holly or even Roy Orbison and the Everly Brothers. But the, a lot, most of the people were hearing their music on either singles, 45s and EPs, and albums weren't really that affordable in those days. So it was quite uncommon for, for an album to be sort of out. But there were albums out, you know, but people just couldn't, most people couldn't really afford an album in those days um, in 63. So the album was released in March 22nd of 1963 and it was a big hit, and then in May of 63 it reached number one, and it was a number one throughout the summer of 1963, and until the November of 1963 when their second LP with the Beatles was released. So I'm going to show you my um, copies of the album. It's a great album, it's my favourite Beatles album I would say. Um, so I'm going to show you my copies of the album. This is an original mono from 1963. Not in too great condition this one, but I did get this one in a, in a job lot. Um, but uh, it's a nice cover, it's a really great shot of the band there. There's the back with all the songs, the liner notes and who does what in the album, in case anybody's interested. <laughs> so yeah, this is the uh, fifth pressing, I've done a bit of research on this, this is a fifth pressing on the yellow black parlophone label. Original pressings were on a gold and black parlophone label, they're really difficult to get hold of. Um, so this is the original, this is a fifth pressing, but it's actually okay, it's mono and it's, it plays good. It's a little bit uh, scratchy, but it does... It does play well, it plays fine. Just try and get it back in. Well, and then the first copy of Please Please Me on vinyl that I had was this one. I bought this about 2013, so 10 years ago now. Um, this is the stereo version, this is the 2012 stereo remaster. I've got this at a HMV a few, about 10 years ago. Um, so yeah, really, it's like similar to the mono, but the covers are a bit, bit brighter. You can see the, 
the beetle's name is in a slightly brighter yellow than the other one. And you can see it a bit brighter within the, the cover shot. Like This is, this picture was taken uh, by Agnes McBean on the EMI headquarters in Manchester Square. And they actually went back years later to do the Get Back photo shoots that would later become the, um, the Red and the Blue albums in 1973. So here's the stereo version. Very identical, but this one is on the a replica of the original black and gold Parlophone label. And this is what it looked like when it was issued back in 1963 in mono or stereo. And I really love that design, I must admit. I really like that sort of black and gold Parlophone design. I've always liked that the design of the label. So there's that one. So that, and then I'm going to show you my CD copies as um, as well. Oh, there they are. And uh, I have an American compilation. I'm called Introducing the Beatles. And this was the first sort of American release of the of Beatles album. This is the American version of Please Please Me, which um, it has nearly all the songs except for Ask Me Why and Please Please Me. Um, it's not an original. It's actually a counterfeit copy because it doesn't have George Harrison's shadow on there. But I got it quite cheap at the record my record shop, so can't hardly complain. Um, in the inner sleeve, put just plain white on the black VJ label. And as you can see, it's got the Beatles name uh, below the spindle hole, whereas it should be above the spindle hole, but it still sounds okay, it still plays all right. Um, it says stereophonic up there. It sounds it sounds okay, but there's like a lot of it sounds all right, but not not great. But it does sound okay. It's listenable, but not like completely unlistenable. It's still still listenable, but it's a nice cover shot of the Beatles. And in America, they released a compilation album called um, uh, the Early Beatles. I don't have that yet. I've got that on CD in the US albums box, which I would like to do a video of on Sunday. But um, anyways, here's the CD version. This is the 2009 stereo remaster that I have the back of it. They changed the back cover for this one. Opens up like that with some nice pictures of the band. I feel like I've shown the CD before in the um, stereo CD box set that I did. Um, I actually might redo that video because um, I didn't shoot that one very well. So that video will probably get a reshoot most likely. But there's the CD. Again, similar to the vinyl. Love that design. Uh, there's a booklet with it. Nice picture in the back. Pictures, the original liner notes from the album. It's a nice photograph. The historical notes, what was going on at each time uh, with the Beatles. Um, there's some alternate cover shots as well. Quite interesting to see. You can kind of compare. It's quite nice to compare, you know, the the, the cover shots of any album, um, not just the Beatles, but any artist, any cover shots. And this is the mono CD from the 2009 box. Unfortunately, this is not a legit. Uh, my mono box is a fake, but eh, it's all right. I, I, I can live with that. Hopefully, I'll get a legit, genuine version of the mono box at some point. Uh, but I'm fine with it. It's all right. Um, it's kind of similar to the model, but just a lot smaller. But it does have the original Parlophone label. It, it actually it nearly looks identical, similar to what a genuine one would look like. So, anyway, it's not not too bad. So yeah, there's that one. Okay, now we're going over all the album's tracks individually. So the first one up is I Saw Her Standing There. I like the way this one starts off. It starts off with Paul going, one, two, three, four. It, and it's a great way to start off the album. And uh, I really like it. It's a really great upbeat song. And it's got hand claps to it. Um, this is a great one. I saw her standing there. A great way to start off the debut album. And this was one. This is one that Paul McCartney plays live today. And there's even a version with um, uh, John Lennon and Elton John doing it at Elton's John's Madison Square Garden concert in 1974. And uh, you can hear that on the Elton John and John Lennon live sort of 45 EP, which I have. Um, 
forgot to show it for this video, but I do have it, um, that EP. But um, yeah, a great one to start off the first album. Um, this is um, this was originally called Seventeen, but it was later renamed, titled to I Saw Her Standing There. Um, and the Beatles actually, I think, had done this one live before recording it in the studio because there's a version from the Star Club release in 19, December of 62. There's a version of them doing it on the Star Club in Hamburg in December of 1962 before the album was um, was released. So, um, yeah, quite interesting that that's there. And this is a great one, great song. Um, then we get one called Misery. Now, this was the one that the Beatles were intending for Helen Shapiro, but they then decided to keep it for themselves uh, for this album. And this is another great song. Um, the first two were recorded uh, on February 11th. Um, I Saw Her Standing There was the second song to be recorded on, on the day of February 11th. Um, uh, Misery, this is a great one. This is um, a great song. I'm quite, actually quite glad that the Beatles kept it for itself. It's short, but it's um, it's so it lasts for like uh, two and a half, a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. Uh, but it's a great song. Um, one of my favourites from the the Beatles. I like the kind of vocals and lyrics to the song, um, and even the piano as well, which was later added on by George Martin a few days later. Um, so yeah, really, really great uh, song, uh, Misery. Then we have Anna Go To Him. Now, Anna Go To Him was originally a song by Arthur Alexander, who was a sort of, I think, a rhythm and blues artist. And John Lennon loved and was a big Arthur Alexander fan. And the, John and the Beatles would often do Arthur Alexander songs in their shows. There's like, you can like see them do set lists where they do a shot of rhythm and blues and Soldier of Love, which were on the live of the BBC albums. So yeah, this is a great song version. John Lennon does a great vocal performance. Now, a little fact about it, John Lennon was actually suffering with a cold on the day that they were recording this. And you, and listening to it, on some tracks you can hear it, but on some you probably wouldn't tell that he's, um, that he's suffering a bit, that he's sounding a bit nasally and a bit larky, but he gives it a, he gives it a great vocal performance nonetheless, and it's a great version of the song, and I go to him. Um, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favourite tracks from the, the album as well. Then we have one called uh, Chains. Now this is a cookie song which George Harrison sings, uh, that George Harrison does this really well. This is his first vocal performance in any Beatles record, uh, Chains. Um, he sings it with um, Paul and John backing him and uh, it's a great, good song, good song. Um, I like the harmonica to it. Um, it's a great song. Uh, don't have much to say to it, but it's a good, good song. Then we have Boys, which is a cover of a... Uh, who did it again? I think it was the Shirelles. It could have been. I may be right or wrong, but I think it was the Shirelles that done it. And this is one that Ringo sings um, on the album. And Ringo has backing with Paul and John as well. And uh, this one was pretty much done in one take. And this was a song that the Beatles would do do live accord over the, the next few years. Even that you can hear it on the Hollywood Bowl uh, album. And they did this BBC recordings of them doing it as well. Uh, on the live of the BBC album, so a great, really good version. I really like this version of the, the Beatles. I really like Ring, Ringo's vocal performance in this song. Uh, I actually didn't realise it was Ringo singing it until like, very early on in my Beatles days in 2013. I was always keen to see who would do what, and uh, I was quite surprised to hear Ringo sing this song. Um, yeah, and Ringo actually does a good, has, has a good singing voice. I know some people don't like Ringo, or they don't like his singing as much, but I think Ringo's a good singer. I, I do think he's a good singer. Um, as well as a good drummer, I think Ringo's a good singer too. Um, and this is one that Ringo sings really well on this one. Then we have uh, Ask Me Why. Now, Ask Me Why was not recorded on February 11th. Ask Me Why had been released prior to the sessions for Please Please Me in January of 63 as the B-side for the Please Please Me single. Um, now, Ask Me Why is a great one, a great song. I really like the vocals from John and Paul and uh, it's a great song. Um, so yeah, one of my favourites from the album, Ask Me Why. A really nice song. One that they didn't do too often. There is a few BBC versions of them doing it, but um, but ne never played it live as far as I know. Um, uh, you, need, you, you need to look at the surviving Beatles set lists. But actually, I tell a lie, they did do it live on the Star Club in Hamburg in Germany in 1962. So some of these songs were actually done live at the Star Club in Hamburg in 1962. Because I do have the... Um, Live at the Star Club album, um, which, although inferior quality, it is like a, a historical document of the Beatles live before they like really made it big in like the 1960s. And then the final track on side one is Please Please Me. This was a really big hit. Please Please Me originally started off as a slow kind of Roy Orbison style song before I think George Martin suggested to John Lennon that he sort of tip up the tempo a bit. 
and uh, it was the second single off the album, released in January of 1963, and it's please, please, and here it is, this is my um, single copy of the album, it's the second pressing because it's on the black and silver label, whereas original pressings were on the red label, um, so please, please me, and that's where I am on the other side. There's a long-standing myth that when jo the recording of the song was done in November of 1962, George Martin uh, had said to the Beatles, congratulations boys, you've got your first number one. And then when you, if you look at some of the music papers, some of the music papers say it did make number one, but most music papers are saying that it made number two in the charts. Now, well, I'm not really too sure what, what's the truth and what's not, but um, I have read into it. And I thought for ages that Please Please Be made number one until about a year and a half ago I was watching a Beatles video and I was shocked to discover that Please Please Me actually never made the number one, number one spot. So I was like, oh, oh. but it made number two, which... Well, it, well, it was the Beatles' first big hit, so it was the Beatles' first big hit, uh, but the first number one was from Me To You, which was a few weeks after this album was released. Um, so yeah, there's Please Please Me, a great song, I really like the sort of vocal performances, and um, if you slow it down, it kind of does sound a bit like Roy Orbison a bit, and uh, that was kind of what John Lennon was sort of thinking when he was writing the song, he was trying to try and write it in the style of um, Roy Orbison, who's a favourite of mine, and... Um, and who was a big favourite of the Beatles as well. And in fact, the Beatles would tour with Roy Orbison in 1963 in the UK. So, anyway, that was a way fact. Okay, that's in the side one. Turn it over. We have Love Me Do. Love Me Do was the first song recorded in September of 1962. Now, Love Me Do was their sort of first big, big hit. And I have the single for that as well. Now, this is the 1982 20th anniversary uh, re-release for it. It's in a picture sleeve, whereas it wouldn't have been originally back in the, the 1960s. And it replicates the original red parlophone label. Now, Love Me Do has appeared on compilation albums, even though it made number 17 in the chart in 1962. But not bad. It wasn't a bad start, but it wasn't like a big, big hit in many ways. It wasn't like an instant smash in many ways. It was number 17, which is not bad. But Love Me Do is a great song. The harmonica was kind of inspired from Bruce Chanel's Hey Baby, uh, which was like out at the same time, I think. But uh, it's a great song, uh, one song from Paul and John, um, and one that they, I think they did live up to 63, um, after 63 they didn't play it that much, but um, this was kind of the, Love Me Do was a sort of start of music changing in many ways, because after this the Beatles, you know, would change the face of popular music, although people wouldn't have really realised it at the time, but when you look back on it years later, Love Me Do did kind of change the world in many ways. Um, so yeah, this is a great album, great song, sorry, Love Me Do. Then we have P.S. I Love You. Now this was the B-side of Love Me Do in 1962. It's a good song, one of my favourites. Uh, it's a good one from Paul. Paul sings this one really well. Um, so yeah, nice song. Um, don't really have much to say, but it's a good song. I like it. Um, then we have Baby It's You. This is a real highlight and favourite of mine. This is one that, back to the February 11th session, this is one that they did. A little fact about the February 11th session, they did, they did record Hold Me Tight from the Beatles' second album with the Beatles, but they, didn't really, they weren't really satisfied with it after 13 takes, and they shelved the track, and it was later re-recorded for, with the Beatles in 1960. So a little fact I thought I'd put in there. But anyway, back to Baby It's You. This is, uh, who did this one originally? It might have been a girl group. Uh, was it the Shirelles? It could have been. I could be right or I could be wrong, but I know it was one of the two. But Baby It's You is one of my favourites. This is one with Paul and George backing and John singing it. And this was the second last song to be recorded on the day of February 11th. And it's a great one. It's one of my favourites Beatle covers that they did. Um, yeah, one of my favourites. Um, uh, do you want to know, uh, Baby It's You from 1963? Then we have, Do You Want To Know A Secret? And this is one of my favourites. This is one, although it's a John and Paul composition, it's one sung by George, George Harrison. And John and Paul do sing backing vocals on the uh, on the song. But you know what? Do You Want To Know A Secret? It's always been one of my favourite Beatles ones um, from when I heard it back in 2013 when I became a Beatles fan, so nearly 10 years ago. Um, but I really like George's vocals on it. Um, it's a good song, one of my favourites. Short, a lot of these are really short, but they're good. But it's a good song, I like it. Um, I quite like the guitar work on it, um, onto the song, it's a good song, um, then we have A Taste of Honey, now I'm not too sure where this one originally came from, this is also a cover, but A Taste of Honey, um, I think it might have been an old 1930s show tune that they learned it from, uh, A Taste of Honey, one sung by Paul, it's alright, not a favourite of mine, but it is alright, it's a good song, but I wouldn't say it's a big favourite of mine, but um, still a good song, it's good, I like it. 
It's good. It's okay. Then we get There's a Place. This was the first song that they recorded for the album on February 11th, 1963. And what a great one, first song to do it in. Um, it's a great song. We really like the harmonica at the start. John and Paul's backing vocals are great. Um, I really like the lyrics to the songs. Yeah, really great song. One of my favourite Beatles ones, There's a Place. And we get to a real great closer in the album. The last track on the album is Twist and Shout, which has always been a big favourite of mine. Done by loads of people over the years, live or not. Um, I think the Beatles, it, it was originally a song by the Isley Brothers, um, and the Beatles had been doing it live before they recorded it in the studio. And we fact about Taste of Honey, Taste of Honey was actually done at Hamburg Star Club as well in 62. And as was Twist and Shout. Now, Twist and Shout had been, they'd been playing that live since 62. And um, I think it was one of the assistant, uh, there's actually a good documentary about the Beatles Please Please Me document album. And um, one of the assistant engineers said, oh, I heard you do this song on the radio the other week there. Was it, uh, I think it was La Bamba? And somebody said, oh no, it was Twist and Shout. And they're like, oh yeah, let's do Twist and Shout. And they had to kind of save this one to the end because John Lennon had been going all day despite his cold. And they knew that either one or two takes of the song and he would tear his voice out, which he ended up doing after doing the song. But he gave it his all, even if he wasn't, even if he was suffering with the cold. He gave it his all in this song, and he did gives a great vocal performance on on here. Um, but yeah, it's a great song. Always been a favourite of mine. And um, the Beatles did this live on several occasions from 1962 up until 65, and it was it was one they often opened their concerts with as well in later years in 64 and 65. It's a great song, Twist and Shout. Um, Bruce Springsteen's done this one live as well uh, on occasions. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great song, a great way to end the album. And the Beatles will do it as concert closers as well. And you can even see John Lennon introduce the song at the Royal Variety in 1963, saying, for the people in the cheap seats, clap your hands, and the rest of you rattle your jewellery, which is quite a little funny introduction that I like. So there we go, that's it for this album. I hope you enjoyed this video. A little, now, how do we rate Please Please Me? It is a 10 out of 10 album, no question. It's my favorite Beatles album, and it's one of my favorite albums of all time. I've got a lot of good memories of listening to this in the summer of 2013, when I was like leaving school, primary school, and getting into secondary school. That was kind of like a turning point. That was sort of like a, getting into the Beatles was really kind of came at a change in my life when I was moving on from primary school into secondary school. And uh, yeah, they really did. This album was a big favourite of mine back when I was 11, 12 years old. And it still is a big favourite of mine. Um, when I listen back to it now, I still still love it. I still enjoy it. No matter if I've gone through like years of not hearing it for a while, still always one that I always come back to and enjoy and enjoy hearing. So I um, hope you enjoy it. And I've got this, this video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you like this album, if you like it, comment below. And it's, it's hard to believe that on March the 22nd, this album will be 60 years old. It, it's hard to believe. You know, you, you do often wonder where have all the years gone. <laughs> Make me sound older when I say that. <laughs> but uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I hope to do more album reviews or more videos about, you know, music in general. Or maybe an, I've, I've got another vinyl update coming in because I've had a lot more vinyls bought in the last month. And... Um, so yeah, I hope to see you for that video bit. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. So until then, bye just now.